Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. I enjoy stories about people trying to pull the fake lawyer thing. Highly recommended to listen to our first story. What a group of nutballs. Her and her husband are perfect for each other. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. $100 is too much for a lawyer's wife. A week ago, I upgraded my PC and was selling my old one. I no longer needed it and didn't really need the money, but I didn't know of anyone just to give it to. So I made a CL post for the PC at $100. I figured it'd be gone from my house and make someone happy. Dear God, what's wrong with people? Within an hour, I get three phone calls of people wanting only parts, whole thing free, or trading crap no one needs. Five gen iPhone? Why? The fifth call was this nice mom, gave me a sweet story about needing another PC for her kids to play Fortnite and do homework, said the price was fine and she would come get it the next morning, Saturday. She comes by, really nice to start, and is excited by the PC. She asks me to turn it on to test if it plays Fortnite. I tell her it doesn't have a HDD, which means no Windows. I show her it post green and ready for HDD. She starts getting angry. You sit on the phone, it plays Fortnite. Me. It will once you add a HDD with Windows. Lady. How much extra for you to do that? Me. I'll gladly give you a small HDD. I had a 500 gigabyte Raptor drive not used for some time but you'll need to buy and install Windows. Lady, so this thing's gonna cost me at least $200 to play Fortnite. You're a liar. I drove 40 minutes for a punk to waste my time. You just ruined my kid's day. Where am I gonna find a PC for my kids? Me. Okay, lady, please leave. You can get a PC at Best Buy or Walmart that plays Fortnite, but you'll be paying far more. Lady, can you just give me the PC so I can buy Windows? It's only fair. Me. No thanks, please leave. Lady, she tries to grab the PC case, which is still plugged in. I stop her by putting my hand on top of the case so she can't pull it. She starts screaming I assaulted her and I should give her the PC and she'll be on her way. Me, wrong, you should leave. She starts screaming some BS about how her husband's a lawyer and she knows the law. Me, I'm laughing as I try to wrangle her out of the house. Just by moving toward the front door, She's going off about how much money I'm going to lose in lawyer and court fees, and I'd be better off just giving her the PC. My wife helps get her out of the house. A few hours go by. This gentleman calls me, tells me he's from some clearly fake law firm, and that he's going to process paperwork for my assault. I'm kind of laughing, tell him to please deliver the paperwork, and I'll gladly have my lawyer respond. The lawyer starts to come undone. Lady. Sir, we can conclude this now without any more lawyers if you provide recompense to my client that you assaulted. Me. No, that's okay. My lawyer said he'll take care of it. Please send the paperwork. I look forward to seeing you in small claims court. Lady. Sir, there's no need for this. The PC will be payment enough. I can hear the woman behind him. It must include the memory and windows. Me. No thanks. Small claims court will be fine. Thank you. I hang up the phone. Block both numbers. A few hours later, I get a call, crazy lady from a different number. I tell her I spoke to her lawyer and look forward to court. She starts screaming about her kid's holiday being ruined and how I'm a terrible person and can't understand because I don't have kids. I hang up, block the number. Next day, give the PC for free to an elderly couple that needed a computer. I added the Raptor drive and installed Windows 10 Home and showed them how to activate. Took all of 15 minutes for them to make an account and activate Windows. And our second story. EM repeatedly hits me with a fresh salmon. What kind of demons drive a mother to repeatedly smack a guy in the face with a fresh salmon? Well, you're about to find out. EM, entitled mother, me, well, you know me, I see innocent cashier. A few years ago, I was at the supermarket and had just gotten in line. I place my items, just a few things, on the belt and put down the sign. In lack of better words, but you know the thing that separates the customer's items? Behind me comes the infamous EM with almost a fully loaded trolley, and before I can even react, she starts removing my bananas and milk and what have we, and places her own items on the belt. Me. 
Um, excuse me, what are you doing? DM, I'm in a hurry. Can you not just do me this favor? Me. Well, normally I would, but you have a fully loaded trolley, and I just have four items. Surely you can wait another 30 seconds. EM, but I already started placing my items on the belt. Me, uh, yeah, after you remove mine. EM, so? Me, are you being serious right now? EM, yes, so make room for me. I'm sure you have plenty of time. Me. Not that it's your business, but I'm actually running a bit late, so no, I don't really have plenty of time. DM. Well, my kids are waiting for their candy, so you'll just have to make time for it. Me. You're not getting in front of me. DM. But my kids are waiting. Do you really want to make them cry? Me. This has nothing to do with your kids. I got here first, which means I get to go first. It's not that complicated. EM, you're really going to be that selfish? You seriously don't want to do this for my children? Me, please stop dragging your kids into this. You're not getting in front of me. So how about you stop acting like a child and put back my items? EM, how dare you talk to me like that and in front of my children? You're wasting me and everyone else's time, so stop your whining and get behind me. As she drops my bananas on the floor. Me, okay, listen. I really don't want to cause a big scene here, but I got here before you, and I'm running late. And on top of things, you're now throwing around my bananas. Please put back down my items. I'm not going to say it again. EM, you idiot, it was an accident. And you don't know what it's like having kids. Me, I really don't see how that's relevant. And please don't call me that. EM, then stop acting like such an effing jerk and let me get out of here so my children can have their candy. Innocent cashier, ma'am, he got here before you. Please calm down and let him pay for his stuff. EM, you too? Why are you all against me? I see. We're not against you, ma'am, but I have to ask that you follow the rules. EM, shut up and stay out of this. Me, don't tell her to shut up. EM, go to hell. I see. Please put down his stuff and let him pay so we can all get moving. This goes on for a while until she finally agrees and furiously starts picking up all her items, insulting everyone around her as I get ready to pay for my stuff. But wait, what's this? Clever as any other EM, she shoved the candy onto my side of the sign, in a very smart move to trick me into buying the candy for her. I see. Um, was this candy yours as well? Me. No. EM, no, it's mine, but he's paying for it. Me, um, yeah, no, I'm not. EM, yes, you are. I think that's the least you can do for me. Me, are you crazy or something? I am most definitely not paying for your candy. EM, it's only $5. Me, I don't care how much it is. I'm not paying for it. EM, oh, I get it. You can't afford it. Me, well, clearly you can't. EM, listen. My kids need this candy now, and you've disrespected me this whole time. You owe me this. She shoves it back to my items again and just ignores anything I say. EM, so thanks for helping me out. Me, you can't be serious. Why on earth would I help you out after the way you've behaved? EM, wow, you seriously won't even do that for me? Me, of course I'm not going to do that for you. EM, you cheap butt loser. It's like $5. Me, what is wrong with you? I'm not paying for your stuff. End of discussion. I'm going to pay for my own stuff, and then I'm going to go. EM, you know you really are pathetic. Me, well, at least I'm not socially handicapped. And boy, I should not have said that, because in the blink of an eye, she just grabbed the nearest thing to her, and in a hot steaming bowl of rage, she unleashed the great salmon of hell upon me. One slap to my face, two slaps to my face, three slaps to my face, and her point stood loud and clear. EM, don't you ever dare talk to me like that in front of my children. She went absolutely bananas. And in the end, security had to come and actually kick her out of the supermarket. The best part? I bought the candy for myself. And it was absolutely delicious. And our last story. No, you can't use my vacation home. I own a small condo in Orlando. I bought it while working for the house, and my friend Ben lived there with me. 
Ben's a cook and is rarely home. He has a large room that's accessible from outside, an attached bathroom that locks to the rest of the house. Well, I got a different job, got engaged to my partner, and moved a few hours away. We kept the condo as a place to stay when we visit the parks, and we agreed with Ben that he could continue living there as long as he paid all the utilities and maintained the place. Our friends use it too. They pay a bit for utilities, are told don't bother Ben and clean before they leave. Between everyone who uses it, we've gotten stuff donated, so it's now a fully stocked vacation home. My immediate family and I have a bad history, but we mended. They've used the condo three, four times a year. On Monday, Ben got woken up at 2 a.m. by hammering on the main door. My aunt and uncle, their kids and grandkids were all there, waiting to be let in. I haven't spoken to these people in years. After they decided I was the devil's spawn for being gay, they demanded that the caretaker give them the keys. Ben called me. I told him to give them my number, then shut and lock the door and not let them in. My aunt was insistent that my condo was actually owned by my family. It was the family vacation home, and it was against the law to not let them in. I told her no, it was mine. I own it, and I let my friends and family use it, but I choose who stays there. There was a lot of back and forth and some petty name calling. She said they were here for a week. Where were they supposed to go? And I said, I don't care. Meanwhile, Ben texted saying my uncle was attempting to kick in the door. I told him to call the police. Ben said they left. In the morning, I got a phone call from my mom trying to convince me to let them stay. We had an argument during which she admitted that she didn't tell people that I owned the property because she didn't want the rest of our family to know that they were in contact with me again. I told her if that's how she wants our relationship to be, then she's no longer welcome. I checked in with Ben and he's okay. Today, Wednesday, my aunt sent several texts asking to stay at the house because they hadn't accounted having to pay for a hotel and they'd planned to just buy groceries and use the kitchen. I told her no. She said they were about to be out on the street with their luggage, she called me cruel and heartless, and that I was ruining Disney for the kids. I know that particular family line has very little money, yet I find it hard to believe someone would plan a whole vacation without accounting extra funds for it. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.